Hi guys, I'm Srishti and I'm back with another set of five questions of finance for you. So today we are going to cover current finance as well as the static finance. So do watch the video till end so that you can have a basic understanding of these concepts as well. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, then what are you waiting for? Hit the bell icon to have regular updates on finance MCQs as well as other topics which could be really helpful in your preparation for examination. So starting with our first question for today. Question says that government of India has a target to make India's economy to a specific level by the end of their term that is 2024. What is the targeted size of the economy? Now this is a really straightforward question which is asking that by the year 2024, what is the target of the government of India for making the economy size to what specific level? So you have to tell out of these four options that which is the correct one. So before answering this straightforward question, let's have some discussion about the facts that I have put in the another slide. So let's have a look. Our Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman, while giving the speech for Budget 2019-20, she mentioned that presently the India's economy is at USD 2.7 trillion and it is the sixth largest economy in the world. So near about it is 3 trillion and in the next 5 years that is by 2024, it is planning to have a 5 trillion economy. Now, in order to become a USD 5 trillion economy, it is estimated that the GDP growth should be 12% annually. So, if this 12% GDP growth is maintained for the next five years, then it will be possible for India to achieve this target of 5 trillion economy. The next fact is that in triple P terms, now what is triple P? That is purchasing power parity and it is an economic theory that compares different countries currencies through a basket of goods approach. Now India is the third largest economy after China and USA in triple P terms. Now these were the facts that I want to discuss it with you before answering the question. Now you must have got to know the answer of the previous question that I have asked. So let's move back to it. So the answer to this question is USD 5 trillion economy by year 2024. Now moving on to the next question for today. RBI released a discussion paper in September 2019 detailing some sectors to bring under its direct regulation. Also, as per the current guidelines, the entities of these sectors are indirectly supervised by the RBI. Now identify the sector being talked about. Now recently, a discussion paper has been released by RBI making some changes regarding to a specific sector. Earlier, this sector was under the indirect supervision of RBI through some way which I will be discussing and now the RBI has proposed to take that sector under its direct regulation. So now you have to tell that which sector I am talking about. So four options have been given to you. Out of these four options, you have to tell me the correct answer. So let's have some discussion on this question as well. Now RBI in the discussion paper have said that it is exploring the possibility of bringing these entities under the purview of the Payment and Settlement System Act 2007. Now what entities I am talking about? The entities in the payment gateway and payment aggregator. So these would be under the consideration of the Payment and Settlement System Act 2007. So earlier these entities were indirectly regularized by RBI. Now the regulated banks with which these entities have built business operations were required to create a nodal account and scrutinize the daily settlements in these accounts. But with the expanding payments ecosystem, the central bank has proposed changes to the existing framework under which these companies are governed. Now you must be wondering that what nodal account is. By definition, nodal accounts are the special internal bank accounts that are mandated by the RBI for businesses that are intermediaries connecting customers to 
sellers. So let's see to have a basic understanding of these terms. So there is a seller or a merchant involved in the online payment transactions. So it could be Mintra. Then we have the customer or the buyer. We have customers bank also known as the issuing bank for suppose you are using your debit card or credit card while the payment option. So the bank that your credit card belongs to that is the issuing bank then the acquiring bank or the merchant bank and the bank having the nodal account as I have already discussed it with. So earlier through nodal accounts RBI indirectly regulated these entities. But now with the expansion of the payments ecosystem, it is planning to directly regulate these entities. Now we have discussed all of these facts here. Now let's move back to the question to answer it. So we know that payment gateways and the payment aggregators is the answer to this question. Housing finance companies they are regulated by NHB but as per the circular recently issued by RBI, HFCs will be considered as one of the categories of NBFCs for the regulatory purposes. But HFCs shall continue to comply with the directions and instructions issued by NHB till RBI issues a revised framework. So then after that it will also be regulated by RBI. Now let's move on to the next question for today. I hope that you have understood the payment gateways and payment aggregators concept and one important fact that I have discussed here in HFCs. The next question is that there are around 500 state level public enterprises of which 200 are loss making. Government has taken the decision to shut down three PSUs because of recurring losses they were incurring. So which of the following are the three PSUs that are going to be shut down? So here a list of seven PSUs have been given to you and out of these seven you have to tell me three PSUs that the government is thinking to shut down. So let's have some brief discussion on this topic as well to have a basic and a clear idea of what is happening. Now state trading corporation it was set up in 1956 as a trading arm of the government to undertake trade with the Eastern European countries. Also according to the STC's annual report for 2018-19, the company is facing severe liquidity crisis. As all the lender banks have reported STC's account as NPA due to non-payment of interest on the banking limits availed by the company and it has also reported a net loss that is after tax of 881 crores. Then we have PEC which is Project and Equipment Corporation. So it was incorporated as a subsidiary of STC in the year 1971 to handle canalized business of export of railway and engineering equipment. So it became an independent firm in 1997. Last but not the least we have MMTC which is Metals and Mineral State Trading Corporation. So it was created in 1963 as an independent entity. So our Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goyal has said that it is not the government's business to be in the business which MMTC is trading in. That is there is no meaning for such a big infrastructure MMTC to carry out gold ex exports and if I talk about the stake that the government have in these of three PSUs then about 90% stake in STC about 90% stake in MMTC and government wholly owns PEC. Basically these three are the PSUs that the government is thinking to shut down. So out of these seven PSUs, MMTC that is Metals and Minerals Trading Corporation, State Trading Corporation and the Project and Equipment Corporation, these three are the ones that the government is planning to shut down. So our answer would be 245 that is option number B. Also let me tell you that Coal India and Power Grid Corporation is one of the profit making PSU of the government. So this was one of the additional thing that I wanted to share it with you. The next question is the Ministry of Finance has scrapped the import duty on which of the component used in LED TV manufacturing accounting for 65 
to 70% of the total production cost. So different components which are used in the LED TV are given to you. Now you have to tell that on which of the component among these four, the Ministry of Finance has decided to scrap the import duty. So let's have a discussion on this as well that earlier when the import duty was there, what happened and why the government has scrapped the import duty with immediate effect. Okay, so in October 2018, that is last year, Samsung has exited the local TV production and it was India's largest television manufacturer. And the reason is that on the open cell TV panels, 5% of import duty was there and this component accounts for 65 to 70% of the total production cost. So because of this import duty, it was really costly for the manufacturers like Samsung to cope up. So now the Ministry of Finance has decided to scrap the earlier 5% to now 0% with immediate effect. So let's move back to our question to answer it in a proper way without a guesswork. So here our answer will be open cell. I hope that you guys are able to understand what I am trying to tell you, what I am trying to discuss with you, the important facts and the figures that I have discussed in the last question. And if not, then you may ask your queries in the comment section below so that I can answer to your questions, to your queries, to make things clear in your mind. Now moving on to the last question for today, who prepares MSC sentiment index for micro and small enterprises MSCs in India? Now four options have been given to you and out of these four options you have to tell me that who prepares MSC sentiment index. Notice the word sentiment here. Now we will be having some discussion regarding to this index in the next slide. So do pay attention. Now this MSC sentiment index is also known as Cree Sid X. Now by now you must have got to know the answer but let's have further discussion on this topic. You all know that MSCs are really an important part of our economy. Now the data on micro and small enterprises comes with a significant lag. So there was a need to introduce this index which becomes a crucial tool for the policy makers, lenders, trade bodies, economists, rating agencies and the MSCs themselves. So till now there was no such barometer available in India though indices and sentiment surveys to track large and mid-sized corporates area plenty and have been in existence for decades but there was no such proper barometer in place. Next, so there is a significant lag in availability of financial information of MSEs which restrict the lenders from taking timely credit decisions. So access to formal finance remains the key challenge for MSEs. So there is a need to introduce Crisidex which is prepared by Chrysal and SID means SIDB and X means index. So it is also known as Crisidex. Now moving back to the question. So our answer as we have discussed in the slide it is Chrysal and SIDB. With this we have completed our five questions for today and I hope that you have understood each and every fact which we have discussed today because these are really important and one of the questions in some twisted form can definitely come in your examinations. So today's session was more of a factual based session and I hope that you have understood each and every fact in detail as I have told you and if you find any query any doubt then do ask me in the comment section below and I ensure you that I'll be asking to each and every question of yours in a much better way. If you have not subscribed to our channel yet then do subscribe to our channel hit the bell icon. Thank you for watching my video.